everybody, welcome to VS for Build. In today's episode, we're asking those tough questions like, uh, does the car start? Does the car run? You know, the classics. We're here at the BMW dealership because my car is leaking oil. And since my car doesn't have a real dipstick, it has some crazy electronic dipstick thing, we have to do a complete oil change with really, really expensive oil. That way we can verify that it has oil in the car before we even attempt to start it. It's a real fun run around. So we're gonna head over to the parts department and pick up a bunch of oil. You guys are so worried about this car. If BMW makes cars half as good as they make coffee cups, we're gonna be fine. They got free food here too. They actually gave me what I think is a pretty good deal on the oil, the whole oil change kit. I think he better threw in a filter, let me check. Got a filter here. I don't know if I'm gonna have, filter should come with the washers, the crush washers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in the box before I leave and double check. Yeah, they're in there, so that's no problem. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, he gave it to me, the whole kit to me for 135 bucks, so I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good deal for an M oil change. Um, so the next thing I gotta go pick up is a heavy duty, nice, brand new, clean magnet. We're gonna insert a magnet into the stream of the oil draining out. We're gonna try and catch any metal shavings that may be in the oil. Uh, if there are a bunch, bad sign. If there aren't any, somewhat good sign. So let's go find a magnet. Got all sorts of types of magnets from Quick Harbor Freight Run, so we're good on that. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about the battery. Last time I tried to use the battery, it, it said it was fully charged on the charger and then it really quickly died, so I think I might just stop by an automotive parts store. It's not the cheapest way to get it, but if I stop by any just regular auto store, uh, they're pretty likely to have the battery, so I'm gonna at least see what the prices are for them. One time or another in this build, we're gonna have to get a new battery. All right, I snagged a new battery. Uh, Optima did hook us up on the RX-7 with a battery, and I'm hoping that they'll be down to hook us up again uh, with one for this car. So for today's exploration, after we start the car today, we're really not gonna need to use a good quality battery for quite a while. So what I'm thinking is try and start the car on the battery that's already in there, uh, not plug this one in so maybe I can return it. And then if we really need this one, then we'll plug it in and use it today. Okay, we're back in the shop and I'm about ready to get started on the oil change. Uh, before I do that though, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start removing a lot of these rock guards and these under trays, whatever I can easily pop off of the car. Uh, that'll just give me more vision on what's going on with like this oil leak and the fluids and the different things that are you know, happening on this car. And it's gotta be done sometime, so I figure I might as well do it before I do this oil drain. Okay, I got all that protective shielding and everything off. Sorry about that light. I got a uh, I got a new camera, and the light in the camera frame rates and, and light rates are not playing well together. Uh, so one interesting thing is I've looked all around the uh, the oil pan here, around that drain bolt, and the oil really isn't coming from any other location and pooling down there. It really, to me, seems that it's actually coming from the drain bolt, which I think is a good thing. I'll replace the crush washer, make sure the bolt isn't fouled anywhere, and uh, and we should actually be in, in a pretty good spot. So hopefully that, I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that's the solution to the oil oil leak. That would be, that'd be a really cool thing. So the next step is though, we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil with a magnet in the drain line. So I'm basically probably just gonna pop the oil drain uh, right here. I'm gonna hold a magnet so the oil is dripping like right over the magnet, and then we'll go ahead and inspect the magnet when it's done. Okay, we got the oil drained, and here is the magnet. Now, I gotta admit, um, I'm not exactly sure what type of things we're really looking for. I mean, I know we're talking metal shavings. I'm gonna try and bounce the light off of the oil. Now, these things that you're seeing over there, those are air bubbles between a piece of plastic between the magnet. Well, it's on top of the magnet. Right here, 
is definitely one tiny little thing. I'd say that's about the size of a grain of sand. And then there are a few other little things that you can see in there. They're very, very small. So I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what level of things we're worrying about and what level of things we're not worrying about. I, I just haven't done this stuff before. And I believe this is magnetic. Let me dive into this, uh, this guy right here and see if it's, if it's magnetic, if there's stuff on top of it. I really don't know yet. All right, the tip of this is indeed magnetic and I left the only, the main thing that I could see was right here. Oh shit. Yeah, in retrospect, the nail was a terrible pointing device. So that little burr right there next to the end of that screw, the head of that screw, is the uh, only kind of large chunk of metal that I, that I was able to find. I found some teeny tiny little flecks that were maybe half the size of a piece of glitter. Again, not a good measuring tool because glitter comes in different shapes and sizes. But anyways, that's the main thing. And to put that into perspective, I mean, I don't know. What do I have around here for perspective? Uh, uh oh, that's like a Sharpie pen. So uh, I don't know if this is a, I don't know if that's a big issue. I don't know if that's a non-issue. I've honestly never checked a magnetic uh, drain plug on my oil before because I've never cared enough. So this is me caring. You guys, people that actually know things, uh, leave me a response in the comments below uh, what you guys think. And also we will, no matter what, um, send in the next batch of oil uh, for the diagnostic tests that those companies offer that will tell you also if you're eating up your rod bearings. So that'll, that'll definitely be done. I wanted to capture some of this oil to do it, but I didn't have a clean container to uh, grab any of the oil. So that was my bad. All right, next thing I gotta do is go ahead and fill up the oil. No, oil filter. Let's go ahead and pull the oil filter and, uh, and, and we can inspect that too. Okay, so we got the old filter out and I went through every vein of the filter and did my best to inspect it and see what different things I could find in there. And what I found was some of this stuff right here. And these are these tiny little specks. They look like chunks of paint to me, but Brett was saying they could be chunks of copper and it's really hard to test because it's not magnetic. So it's, you can't just stick a magnet to it. So that could be a sign that we're having lower rod bearing failure. The casings of the bearings could be failing and wearing down uh, or not. But here's what I'm thinking. Around 60, 70, 80,000 miles on these cars, they're gonna really start looking at your oil like we just did today. And if they see any you know signs, they're gonna recommend that you get your rod bearings replaced. Um, now we're seeing some signs that you know they could, it could go either way, but given the history of this car, that at 74,000 miles it was sold, uh, the, the person probably didn't do $1,200 of preventative maintenance and then sell the car. Uh, he probably sold the car, and I think my guess and my you know my determination on this car was it was bought by somebody that really couldn't afford it and couldn't afford to keep it maintained properly. So at that point, they probably have been neglected. So I'm guessing that they've never been done. That's just a guess, that's a hunch, I have no idea, but I'm gonna treat it as such. So what we're gonna do today is, I still wanna make sure the engine runs before I buy all these parts and the stuff and, and then do the whole procedure. Um, so we're gonna turn it on for just a few seconds. You know, we're gonna put the fresh oil on, turn it on for just a few seconds, uh, make sure it runs. And then the very next thing is I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna order the kit to do this. And I'm not, sh and, and I think I'm gonna tackle it in the shop. If there's anybody in Oregon that's like a BMW master mechanic or anything that wants to look over my shoulder, maybe help me out, give me some pointers while I'm doing this, I'd welcome your presence in the shop while I'm doing this. Uh, but if not, I'm just gonna tackle it myself. It's a hard procedure. It's probably one of the most in-depth engine-wise jobs that I've, I will have ever done, but that's why I'm here. That's why I do this show. That's the type of stuff I wanna learn. So we're still gonna try and start it today, but once we turn it off, that's the last time it's gonna run with these rod bearings in it. Got 
got the new oil filter in, all that stuff buttoned up. Eight quarts in on the top. This car has an E dipstick, so it would have to run for a long period of time before we could measure it, which we're not gonna do. So uh, the, the manual says 8.8. .8. Uh, normally there's leftover residuals in the system, so eight should be perfectly fine. We topped off the water. We still have a water leak that I can't even figure out where it's coming from, but uh, we it's it's definitely like a tiny pinhole leak. So we just, we just filled that bad boy up. So uh, I read some comments and they were saying that the car probably won't start, that it has auxiliary power and it's able to do some other things, but it's not gonna start because of a really interesting thing um, back here, which is an explosive airbag charge in line uh, with the, uh, sorry, camera's not wanting to focus, it's right there. Uh, this is an explosive charge well, people were saying explosive charge um, from the airbag system. Now the airbags were deployed up front and that makes sense. This little connection and that little guy that does look like an explosive charge. So that's, that's really interesting. It's really cool. I don't think car manufacturers should uh, put uh, a lead acid battery in the trunk of a car like this if they're gonna have to like have some crazy explosive device in the back to detach power uh, in the event of a wreck, but Whatever, it's pretty cool. So uh, that's that's the thought. So I'm gonna try and start the car. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this whole thing up. I'll try and start the car. If it doesn't work, we're gonna have to take this thing. God, I really wanna take this apart anyways. So what I'm seeing right here is there's this little piece of plastic that's like pushed down and, uh, and, and then this cable, and my new camera's not focusing for beans. This cable's like really loose right here. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart. I'm gonna pop it apart right now and let's see what we can find out. I didn't even have to actually go as far as trying to take the whole thing apart. What I did was I just uh, flipped up this tab here so then I could like insert the wire back into where it came from before it got exploded out. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on a solid fix because this is all going to be rewired uh, for the long run when it goes into the new car because that wire will be like three feet too long anyways. So everything's tightened down. Everything's good here. It's time for the moment of truth. We got to go up front and try and start this car. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Now I'm not planning on running this car for very long because I've been told it's not good to run cars with open exhaust manifolds, as well as obviously the rod bearing thing that we talked about earlier. I'm not too worried about the rod bearing thing, honestly, but the open exhaust manifolds, I've heard that's like a big no-no. You don't want to do that for too long. So it'll be just a couple seconds if it even works. Here we go. It clearly worked, but I'm seeing some leakage down below. Let, let's check that out. Okay, that's nothing to worry about at all. What happened was is when we were, when I was topping off the, the water, I definitely spilled. I didn't use a funnel and I spilled around. Some of that water got around where the, uh, the exhaust manifold is or the exhaust opening for the block. And then with that high pressured air exhaust coming out of there, it just like the residuals just went everywhere. But it's just water. It's like clear, clean. Uh, water from right up top and it stopped. It wasn't actually a leak. So The car starts the car starts the car runs uh, It was the uh, the RPMs were, were pretty steady. It was hanging on there But uh, like I said, I didn't want to run it for too long. That's definitely a cold start It went right up to the right amount of RPMs that it's supposed to have um, And I can't tell you if it sounded good or not because it was so damn loud that I had to plug my ears But it was consistent. It was consistently very very loud yeah, V10, uh, V10 open headers is a pretty, pretty damn loud experience. Well, that's a pretty damn cool thing that the engine starts. I'm very happy, but I also expected the engine to start because for someone to drive it into a situation where they could crash, probably should have ran at the time, right? So, yeah. Um, that's, uh, before we wrap up, I have one more thing I want to talk to you guys about. Camera stuff? Anybody interested? So check this out. This camera right here, is our old camera and it was showing signs of, of death. I've had it for about a year and two, maybe two years. It's been through a lot. You can see it's like covered in, well, this camera won't focus on, on things. Uh, it's got, you know, paint overspray on it and a lot of other crazy stuff. It's been through a lot. This camera right here is our new, uh, new studio, like new kind of full on setup. It's a Canon uh, EOS 6D Mark II. 
um, with a big old wide angle lens on it and stuff like that. And I was trying using this today, but the big problem is, is the production time that it takes for me to set up the time lapses with this camera. With this camera here, it's like it's two clicks, two, two taps, boom, I'm in time lapse. With this camera here, it takes forever to set up into time lapse. And when I'm walking around the shop, it seems to be losing focus a lot. But when it's in focus, it's like really highly focused. So I don't think I'm gonna continue using this camera. I might actually have to sell it. So if anybody's in the market and wants one, maybe hit me up. Um, I might just have to keep using this thing until it completely dies or I don't really know. I know the picture quality is a little bit different, but what I'm actually trying to get at, guys, is give me your opinion, give me your feedback on how you feel about this camera, uh, if I should try and struggle through it and use it. If I had a dedicated cameraman, um, the whole focus hunting thing and other things wouldn't be as big of a problem, but when you have these lenses that take just, it's called a shallow depth of feel, it, it only has focus for a really small amount. Like if I put my hand over here, you see it's out of focus because it's focusing on my face right here. Everything behind me, totally blown out of focus too. It gives it a cinematographic look, it gives it a high quality look. This camera, not because it's cheap, it's just developed to do a different thing, doesn't exactly do that, but the plus side is, is it's not out of focus every few seconds. So, I don't know. I'm more of a running gun, I kind of prefer this dealie, but let me know what you guys think and I could, I could, I could work with it. So that's it, that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna pick up one of these hoodies, head over to beastforbuild.com. We still got a bunch of them. All the other ones that just got ordered have all shipped out, so you guys should see your shipment notifications and everything all going out like that. If you wanna follow us in more places, beastforbuild on Instagram. And um, yep, that's about it. I'll see you guys tomorrow when we start pulling this engine out of the car.